Okay, good afternoon to you all. This is a small video I'm doing on the ASTA Iceman cheese making vat that we bought um, a month or so ago. I know some of you are particularly interested in these particular vats. So I'm doing one so you can actually learn a little bit more about them because there is very little about this vat on the internet. I think I've seen a one minute display and that's all. So I'm hoping this might answer a few questions and probably make a few decisions for some people. Now we purchased the 200 litre variety. Be aware that there is a 50, a 100 and a 300 litre variety. So what I show you may vary a little bit uh, if you're deciding on either the smaller ones or the bigger one. Now it's a 230 volt unit. We've actually got our heating elements already connected. Um, we don't normally have 230 volt in this country but it is an optional extra if you want to use it and we have used it and as a result uh, we have powered up accordingly. Now the reason why there is three power cords for this is there happens to be three heating controls. Each of the elements inside, and there are three of them inside, are controlled by a separate heating control. Now that means if you wanted to actually turn off one of these, you didn't need all the power, it's quite easy to simply turn off one of these. The heating element starts at 30 degrees and works its way up, and I don't know any cheese that actually is heated to less than 30 degrees. There is also another power element for the agitator, and I've even found a spot to put my recipe up which is very handy, except when you've got to take the lids off. It's a three-in-one vat, the inner vat, which we all know about. There is a, a vat inside and the outer one. The inner one is the one that we fill with water and then heat our, our milk accordingly. The thermostat is our own. One of its weaknesses is you don't have anywhere to put your thermostat, so you've got to invent your own. On the left hand side is all the nozzles etc for input and output. The one that is on the screen at the moment is the input and is particularly important when you're filling your vat with water. This is the output one. We do not use it and I'll tell you in a moment why. This is the milk in or way out nozzle, also particularly important. And this fellow here is the overfill, and we do use that more than anything else. Now the reason why we don't use this fellow here is it happens to be down the bottom for starters. Any of you who have ever been in the scout or the guiding movement will know that if you are introduced to a, t a bush or a campfire heating system, cold water went into the bottom, hot water came out of the top. So if you're using this for output, you're going to find that it'll simply remove all the cold water that's coming at the bottom when it should actually be removing the hot water from the top, which is exactly what we do. This vat has an agitator. Be aware that it is an optional extra, and we actually find it very important, particularly when you're dealing with cultures and when you're stirring rennet. You'll find that once the rennet has actually been put in and it has been set, we normally take off our lids and then we work from an open vat. The 200 has a three-section lid, a right, a centre which contains the, uh, the agitator and the left which we've already removed simply so you can actually see in the inside. And they actually can be leaned anywhere you like. Now be aware that the left and the right ones are quite light but the fella in the middle is actually quite heavy, so be very careful when you're actually taking that one off. Now we need a trolley to sit this on because underneath it just happens to be the agitator and we don't want anything to happen to this at all. There is also a measuring meter, which we do use, starting at 50 litres and going up to 200. We're 25 litre or 25 litre marks in between. Now we normally use between about 60 to 80 litres of milk so it is particularly helpful. Now the other optional extras that came with it was the biggest paddle I've ever seen and yes we do use this fella, it is pretty large. And considering that the curd that comes with 60 to 80 litres of milk you'll understand the reason why we do use it. It also comes with two harp uh, cutters which at this stage we are not using because we're not using enough milk. Be aware with these vets that there is a fair step up. We actually used this fellow here, which was 15 litres of milk, and we were very comfortable with that. 
But when you actually come to something that's likely to, to actually use 200 litres of milk, suddenly it becomes a little bit more inspiring. So we're actually starting at a lower level and working way, way up. We're not ready for 200 litres. We're certainly not ready for 1,000 litres. But the difference with these machines is that they tend to be the in-between the hobby, which is what that was, to our first introduction to commercial. Yes, we'll probably go to a 1,000 litre uh, that eventually, but this is a nice one in between. Now the agitator itself, because it's an optional extra, has one single control and only one speed. To turn it on, you just simply move the dial to the 12 o'clock position, and to turn it off, you take it back to the 9 o'clock position again. We're finding that it is it's still a little bit difficult to get used to. We're also finding that we have to put this on an incline to actually get rid of the whey. It's not that easy to remove excess whey in your vat if you've got it standing on a level. Unfortunately, we did some damage to the little system that was underneath that you used your feet to actually push it up. So in the meantime, I pinched the Toyota's car jack and it's very simple just to push it up and that enables us to remove the whey. It comes on caster wheels but be aware the two on this side are rigid. In other words, they'll turn, they'll actually go around, but they won't turn sideways. The two at the, on the other side are both uh, turning left and right as well as um, going round and round. So you can only really move on this side, not on the other side. There is a brake here. We've never had to use it, even when we put the vat on an incline. Now, we use buckets or rather large ones because we actually collect our way and it goes to a local pig farmer this fellow here is never ever uh, covered at all and there is always a bucket underneath simply because i'm forever adding water and rejecting it and as yap will tell you the water that comes out of this is the best dishwashing water you will ever get but the advantage of a vat of this size means that instead of producing a couple of cheeses we now are producing, in this case, there is four cheddars currently on their third press now, and there is two more cheddars currently on their third press. You'll actually find that our production here has tripled, and in some cases gone up by four times. Be aware, it takes a little bit longer to actually uh, pasteurise your milk, you're dealing with a, a lot more milk anyway, and it takes a little bit longer to get them all settled into the cave. So all of a sudden our days are probably one to one and a half hours longer. It's a, a, com it's a, it's a neat little unit um, and as long as you look after it, it should last you years. For those of you who are intending or thinking very seriously about these fats, I would certainly recommend them, but be aware that they are a bit of work. If you've been using a pot for the last couple of years, it's certainly... Uh, it's certainly going to test you for a little while, but once you get used to it, it's, it's a brilliant piece of equipment. Thank you kindly, and talk to you guys soon.